My name is Daniel Bernardi. I'm a professor of cinema at State. I'm the director and the creator of the Veteran Documentary Corps. I was, you know, a child of the 60s. So I was 13 years old when JFK was assassinated. Uh, I was you know, raised watching Camelot in the White House. So the ask not what your country can do for you, um, ask what you can do for your country was, you know, a Herculean um, call of my generation to step up and serve. I was lying on that airstrip with five bullets in me and thinking, my God, my life is over. So I had a, a, a window of what the members of the military go through each and every day for tours of duty that go on for a year. They get redeployed and I had maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Um, I, I know what it's like to get shot. I mean, I, I've gone through that emotional, physical experience, but I had like a nanosecond to what so many members of the military come home with. So that has certainly informed my position on so many of these issues. Help you gun. I do. Congratulations, you are now a member of the American. Well, in 1945, one day my sister said, why don't you join the waves? And I said, oh, if I'm going to join anything, I'm going to go in the rains. They have nicer uniforms. <laughs> Anyway, I went down to the recruiting office and at first they didn't want to take me because my eyes were very bad. I had to take a test and it was in a long hallway and they said, just walk till you can read it. Well, <laughs> I practically walked into the wall. They decided they would accept me and I'd have to get new glasses, which was okay. And then my father, of course, thought I was a pioneer. In 2009, I headed up a committee of people who decided that we ought to have a memorial to commemorate those who gave their lives and served in the Korean War. And also to serve as an educational tool because Korean War veterans aren't going to be here much longer. My name is John Stevens. I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel of the Marine Corps. I served 23 years on active duty. I was at Pearl Harbor at the time that the attack took place. It was a terrible sight. I spent about six months out at Midway. In the daytime, I was the communications officer for Sand Island, and at nighttime, I was a Navy coding officer. By the time the war ended, I had over seven years service. I was a captain. I was off to a regular commission. I gave kind of 100% to my job, whatever it was.
there aren't a lot of rites of passages in this world, and I think, um, you know, you're always kind of questioning, you know, your manhood on some level. I think most most men in this in this world do on on a certain level, and I felt like I was a man by doing this type of thing. I was I was, I was going through a rite of passage um, that made me confident in in myself. Kind of early on, realized that once you, when you're in the military, you're almost kind of a piece of equipment on some level. So I wanted to do the most expensive piece of equipment possible. Um, so I went and got uh, as much training as possible. The film is uh, it chronicles uh, my la my fourth combat cruise to Vietnam, uh, in which I uh, was fortunate enough to be able uh, shoot down two MiG aircraft uh, in a air-to-air -air battle. And then uh, three months later, I was shot down and became a prisoner of war for the last seven months of the war. So it chronicles my experiences in those two big events. I think that it's important for our young people to know that the whole family's involved. It's not just the aviator or the, the person, in, the active duty person. There's a family behind that. And I think it's really important to tell our young people that story. I really do. sign uh, is uh, fingers and it came about because uh, I lost my thumb uh, in prison camp uh, in Vietnam in 1972. The war had uh, really taken on a big time there that was after the Tet Offensive in March 72 where the North Vietnamese invaded the South and, and big time, and, and uh, so the, the Midway and, and our air wing were actually sent out there six weeks earlier than we were supposed to be because we were needed on, on station. So we just stopped all the training that we had. We packed up in 72 hours, and we were off to the war. 